Good morning, Facebook. Hello, Facebook. Good morning, June 18th. June 18th. Um, just going live here, getting confirmation that I am live. Hopefully my audio works. Um, I have a friend here today who's sitting at my feet. Um, uh, it's... Uh, Okay, good. I am live. There is there is sound there. Um, so I have Barolo here today with me, the border collie in the office. Yesterday was Zeus. Um, the other dog, these are Courtney's dogs, um, or they were my parents' dogs, the two of them. Um, so he's here. We're going to go uh, probably to Sam's Point in a little while for a, I have to spell this out, and he still might know it, uh, R. U N is where we're going to go. And I have to say that very slowly so he doesn't catch on. But if I say the word, he will um, go crazy um, because that's his favorite thing to do. Um, being a border collie, um, they are bred to um, be out in the pastures with the sheep and very active. So he's uh, has a little bit of what would seem to be ADD, but it's just normal for his um, for his breed. And uh, we have two border collies, Barolo, who's a young one, who's seven, and Baxter, who is, uh, when, how's old that Baxter now, 14? He's going to be 16. Be 16? Yeah. Wow. And he's still R-U-N-S every day <laughs> outside <laughs> around the, uh, the pond at the house. He's still out there, very active. Um, so let's see. So if you can hear me, just drop a comment, hashtag live. Uh, on the replay, I'm assuming somebody would have spoke up already if you could not hear me. Good morning, Joel. Good, mor good morning, Cosmo. Uh, so, uh, yeah, um, we are, it's Friday, getting ready to roll into Father's Day weekend. We really don't have anything special planned for Father's Day weekend. We're open normal hours. Um, same thing with Mother's Day. We really don't plan anything special. Folks, we are so busy. Um, we have a lot of catering this weekend. Um, and uh, just to add more to our plate of stuff, but we're open. Um, we're open. Uh, we're doing cowboy steaks, uh, return of cowboy steaks onto our menu. We got local asparagus back in. Local asparagus, he wants to say hello. Come on up and say hello. He wants to say hello. There he is. There he is. <laughs> yeah. uh, Courtney gave him a haircut. He's all uh, shaved, trimmed. He looks really good. Um, so uh, uh, that's a story. Yeah. Here, roll up. Roll up here. Uh, let's see. So um, I want to talk about shrimp today. I want to talk about shrimp today. Uh, is there such thing as sustainable shrimp? And I get more in depth on this on my new uh, episode of Chef on a Mission podcast, which you can find on iHeart, iTunes, and anywhere else podcasts are distributed, like Podbean. Um, I get more in depth. I talk about more of the Red Lobster uh, the Red Lobster um, class action lawsuit. I get more in depth with that, and it's about a half an hour of in depthness and just that topic. So that will be available any day now on our next release, uh, or maybe it's next week. I don't know. My assistant, when he puts those up and releases up, but the content is filmed and it's uh, uh, recorded and ready to go. So um, let's see. Shrimp. Is there such thing as sustainable shrimp? So Red Lobster is getting in a little trouble, a little hot water, because they claim they have this seafood, um, these seafood standards, and that they're ethical, humane, all these kinds of things, um, eco-friendly, um, sustainable. And um, the reality is that their shrimp is coming from Indonesia, um, China, um, India, um, a couple of countries in there that do not get good reviews with Monterey Bay Aquarium Seafood Watch. And this happens to me all the time. People are like, oh, I, I, I like wild shrimp. I, I only eat wild shrimp. Wild shrimp is, is so much better. Folks, this is a tough one because I'm, 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 in a, I'm in a predicament a lot when it comes to sourcing shrimp because it's hard to get a sustainable shrimp, whether it's farmed or whether it's wild. See, the issue with wild shrimp, a lot of these people are, 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 um, are touting wild shrimp. Wild shrimp that comes from the Gulf um, or wild shrimp is typically caught in the warmer waters is trawled, T-W-A-L, trawl. Trawl is a way, trawling is a way of catching, catching um, some of the different species. You know, scallops are caught trawled like this too. Um, you can have a midwater trawl where the trawl never hits the bottom of the ocean, but then you can have the trawl that hits the bottom. And the trawls that hit the bottom are the worst. They cause the most destruction to the bottom of the ocean floor because they rake the ocean floor and destroy all the coral and all the sea life that's in the bottom of the ocean floor. From there, um, they catch every species that is in its way and it gets dumped up onto the boat. And fish, uh, shrimp, has a massive bycatch. 
the average shrimp catches are seven pounds of bycatch, seven pounds or more of unwanted species for one pound of shrimp that you actually get to, to serve that gets uh, put on your plate. So there's a lot of habitat destruction and, and bycatch issues with this. Bycatch issues are one of the things that does not make shrimp sustainable because you're getting other species, you're targeting one species and getting other species. So for us, we've always had to find a farm that was um, doing the right thing or is the right thing as possible, right? The best possible standards. And we've always followed um, Ecuador. Ecuador, we use, this, we use this shrimp called the right choice shrimp. And Ecuador, and I'm going to just read a little bit of information on here. Um, uh, state-of-the-art aquaculture facility in Ecuador, um, eco-friendly farm, utilizes crystal clear river waters direct from the Andes Mountains, naturally raised according to the European organic standards without chemicals, antibiotics, genetic modifications, or pollution. Great for shrimp cocktail salads, pasta on the grill, no chemical fillers, no phosphates, no uh, nothing added to it, just the shrimp. So... That's a shrimp that we're using um, on, on uh, pretty much on a consistent basis, a shrimp from Ecuador. Um, but it's farm-raised, um, and it's not um, like the wild, but the wild is ha causing habitat destruction. And I'm sure most of you have heard of the Gulf oil spill, of course, um, but there's something that's even more, um, more predominant down there than the Gulf oil spill, and that's called the dead zone. The dead zone is this massive area. Um, of agricultural runoff that comes through the Mississippi Delta and drops into the Gulf of Mexico, and nothing lives in the dead zone. And the dead zone is growing massively day by day, far more than the oil spill ever did, ever grew, is this um, dead zone. And it's a part of the Gulf of Mexico that nothing lives because it's so toxic, and it's all the animal manure runoff. It's all the chemicals. It's all the glyphosates. It's all everything that's happening in the middle of the country that gets poured into the Mississippi River gets dumped into the Gulf of Mexico, and it's called the dead zone. So um, the Gulf of Mexico is getting polluted at, a, at an astonishing rate, and that's where a lot of the shrimp come from, from the Gulf of Mexico, the Gulf shrimp, right? So I'm not comfortable. I've never been comfortable serving Gulf shrimp like this. Um, so we've using the same recommendations that Ecofish uses, a great, fantastic company, uh, Henry and Lisa. Uh, he is very, very strict on everything that he serves. And we, we were one of his first restaurant customers years and years ago. Um, I was been buying from Henry since 1999, um, in another operation in Colorado. So, um, that's a shrimp we use. Now there is the most sustainable shrimp that are going out there, the most sustainable. Now, if you like shrimp folks, this is something you definitely need to share with other people who like shrimp. Uh, definitely share this with chefs. Um, um, and if you like shrimp, just make a comment. And say, yes, love shrimp. I mean, a lot of people love shrimp. But you go to these restaurants, and they're most likely these restaurants are serving cheap Asian shrimp filled with chemicals. Do you know, do you know a very, very, very common practice is um, where they cut the eye glands out of the female shrimp. They cut the eye glands out of the female shrimp without painkillers um, because it makes the shrimp grow quicker grow faster they basically snip the eye glands of the fish so obviously no eyes um the fish are typically uh, the fish the shrimp are typically packed so tight that they're lacking for oxygen um they can't see and this is basically the way they grow it throughout um throughout a lot of farms in asia a lot of farms usually they go into the mangroves and kill off the mangroves they put the shrimp farms there nothing else lives it kills off the mangroves they take it over all the biodiversity and, and the necessaries of the mangroves are all gone. And this keeps happening over and over and over and over and over again all throughout Asia. And most and then they, then the chemicals they use. If you there's some great documentaries out there on the side effects of the chemicals that the employees have at the shrimp farms. Um, short term, long term health health um, detriments from the actual chemicals they're using. They just douse. I mean, these are these are countries where there is no EPA, where there is no, and I'm, I'm not saying that that ours are totally legit, um, but these are countries that have nothing in place, nothing, um, or the stuff that is in place is so low because they just want the uh, the product. Um, and these shrimp farms come in to, especially in the Bangladesh, these big shrimp farms come in. They do nothing for the locals except drain the mangroves, create drought, and all the money goes to one or two families, three families who own the shrimp farms. Nothing gets distributed to the locals. It's a it's a very low-paying job, especially in Bangladesh. Bangladesh is one of the poorest countries. Um, I think it caught... Have you ever seen clothing that's made in Bangladesh? They're paying those seamstresses 18 cents an hour, um, and they literally work 18 hours a day, um, women, just to 
be able to put something on the table um, for their kids at 18 cents an hour. Um, so um, I had a, I had I had somebody help me from Bangladesh once uh, to do a little work with uh, with one of my websites, and I paid him like 30 bucks an hour because he knew what he was doing, and. Um, and it was somebody somebody recommended. I only needed like three hours worth of work. I was like, the guy is an expert. The guy knows how to do this coding. He can build this funnel for me, the sales funnel for my coaching. And so he spent three hours in this. I paid him ninety dollars. It's probably, um, I mean, that's literally what they make in a month there, um, in uh, or two months in, in Bangladesh. Um, and he always he messages me every so often. Did anything else done? Um, very 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 competent and and very very knowledgeable. So um, I mean, there's opportunities for people everywhere to do something positive um, and do something online and 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 create create money. At um, 18 cents an hour, paying him 30 dollars an hour for the few hours he did. This was like four years ago. Um, and it was somebody who came from a recommendation from somebody else who used him and said, you call this guy, he's really good, message him here. He knows exactly what to do and he'll get it done and it worked out really well. Um, so um, Bangladesh, um, they flood the mangroves in these, company, country, these companies. They, they, they drain the shrimp farms. They leave all the pollution there. All the runoff water goes into the local communities. It's a disaster. So this is the shrimp that's getting served. And the majority of restaurants out there are serving this type of shrimp because it's so inexpensive. It's, it's literally half the price that we pay for our Ecuadorian shrimp, literally half the price. And on top of it, most times they add phosphates and they plump it. They add a sodium solution or some kind of chemical there to gain more weight as if the shrimp's not cheap enough to begin with. So um, that's the situation with that, and that's, that, that, that's what's happening. Now, there is the very best shrimp that you possibly can buy, the number one shrimp you can buy. There's two types that I know of, Alaskan spot prawns and Maine sweet shrimp. Maine sweet shrimp will start with first. Those are those salad shrimp, those little tiny salad shrimp that you look at and be like, oh, I don't want to eat those shrimp because they're too small. Those shrimp right there are the best. Make sure they have no chems in them, chemicals, fillers, anything like that. They're wild. They're wild caught shrimp that are caught with traps. There's no habitat destruction. There's no bycatch issues. They, but cold water is co a smaller shrimp. Shrimp don't grow as large in colder water versus warmer water. So Gulf shrimp are bigger. Um, Maine shrimp are smaller. So they're called these Maine salad shrimp, and these are very, very sustainable. They get the highest nods from all the seafood advocacy groups out there. You throw a trap in, the shrimp bait it, the shrimp swim in, you pull it out, there's bycatch, you grab it and throw it out. It's not being trawled to death because um, when all that stuff gets trawled for a mile on the ocean bottom floor and it gets pulled up and dropped on the boat, all that stuff is dead and mangled and suffocated. And, you know, it's it's you throw, might throw this stuff back, but it's, it's not the situation where... Um, you're just being able to handpick, throw things back. That Forrest Gump movie was an extreme exaggeration, dramatization of how shrimp is typically caught on the large vessels, on the large vessels, on the big commercial vessels. So if you're getting smaller shrimp uh, production or smaller shrimp catches from smaller vessels, then you're going to pay more money. And it is out there. Um, they do catch it in the Carolinas and all the way on down south. That does happen. So main sweet shrimp, when people, don't, when people, when they want shrimp, they want big shrimp. They don't want shrimp shrimp. They want big shrimp. So um, a lot of people will veer away from the main, the main salad shrimp, the salad shrimp from the northeast. Um, the other shrimp is Alaskan spot prawns. In season, in September only, they typically come with the row on intact. Um, they come head on. And these shrimp are about three times the price, four times the price with the heads on and, and the peel on, which makes them about five times the price. Um, literally, if I were to buy these with the head on and throw away half the shrimp, I'm going to probably will pay 20 bucks a pound and then have to throw away half the shrimp. These shrimp are, again, trap caught. They're smaller shrimp. They're the, they're the closest thing to the lobster you can get, um, uh, 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 these Alaskan spot prawns. Um, maybe I can get a picture of an Alaskan spot prawn and show everybody here. Let's see. Um, they are truly an amazing shrimp. If you've ever had Alaskan spot prawns, you, uh, you have had a treat. I try to get them every now and then just to get a few, and it's tough to um, it's tough to get them. Um, let's see images, spot prawns. Let's see here. Yeah, that's them right there. If you can see, those are the spot prawns. Um, very pricey. They're packed. A lot of times they have the row on them still. Um, let's see. Back one step here. Prawns with row. Row are the eggs that are on it. 
Um, this one doesn't have the row, but this one um, is another picture. So that gives you a perspective of how big that is. There's the person's hand, right? That's the person's hand. And the tail is to the bottom of their hand. And you take off the whole head. So literally more than 50% of that is actually waste. Um, so if it's 15 bucks a pound, 18, 20 bucks a pound, you're looking at $40 a pound very easily for these shrimp. When you can go buy, literally, if you walked in the restaurant depot right now and bought shrimp, you could buy large shrimp from Asia, from China, from Bangladesh for five bucks a pound, peeled, peeled, five bucks a pound. That's about my, I wish we paid five bucks a pound for our shrimp. We paid double that for the Ecuadorian, Ecuadorian shrimp. So um, that's how cheap shrimp is. Now, shrimp has taken a hit lately because of the shorts. Well, because all the, let's face it, a lot of restaurants opened at one time uh, that weren't open and um, they weren't used to this kind of supply. So a lot of things are just trying to catch up like um, lobsters, um, chicken, things like that. Um, lobsters, a lot of lobsters are going to China too, by the way, which is driving the price up insane on lobster. So that's the story, folks. There are two types of, oh, Joel says, what about Vietnam? Vietnam has much higher standards than all the other countries there. Vietnam has um, has set government, high government standards. It's a great question, Joel, Vietnam. Um, so, yeah, you like prawns. I mean, who doesn't like prawns? Um, those large, have you ever seen those large Nigerian um, prawns? They are amazing, um, but they're wild, and they're probably habitat destruction. Um, but they come these, like, four of them to a pound, so they're four ounces each. Um, they're really, really uh, an, an impressive shrimp um, and people want to see when people see shrimp they want to see big shrimp they don't want to see small shrimp so the main street shrimp are always out and then and the Alaskan spot prawns are too small for a lot of people but the closest thing to lobster folks is Alaskan spot prawns um, most chefs agree the taste most connoisseurs agree that's the closest meat that you'll get to a lobster is Alaskan spot prawns um, and they're in season in September. You can buy them frozen year-round if your supplier has them. I've already asked Alaska Gold, our trusted supplier, if they have any, let me know. Um, I asked them last year, and, and uh, they really didn't do anything with them last year. Maybe this year we'll be able to get a few pounds, 10 pounds or so of Alaskan spot prawns and put them on the menu, um, do something fun with them as a garnish or something for a dish. All right, folks, that is it. Everybody have a great, great day. Um, Father's Day, we're open at 3 o'clock. We're open at 5 o'clock tonight. Ellenville Streets. It's happening. It's not happening. I'm not sure. We can't participate in this weekend because we have catering jobs every night. Um, I literally have a, a high-end wine tasting tonight at an Airbnb that I'm doing uh, disgorgement of the uh, Movia Puro, where it's a bottle I put upside down, special uh, crowbar to open it and pop out the disgorgement of the champagne, and some really other high-end wines, some Barolos, Brunellos, um, some really awesome, awesome stuff. An Oak Age Verdejo from Spain. Um, that's that's uh, that's a really awesome, awesome wine. One of the wineries I went to. So that's tonight. Um, Monday we have another catering event. Saturday we have a catering event. Um, we're just all over with catering events, and so this is why we really couldn't do go above and beyond and open early for Father's Day. So if anybody knows anybody that's, that's looking for a job, we need one line cook. We need one line cook to help us get through the summer. Um, I have somebody coming in, but you never know. Um, if that'll work out or not, uh, but I am looking for one person. Uh, so if anybody knows anybody, send them our way. All right, folks, have an amazing day, and we'll talk to you later.